probably four years, at least 12 a year, so between 40 and 50. Oh, wow. And now how long has um, Del Marva Historic Ponds been doing this? Four years. Four years. Okay, so so you've been involved from the beginning. Four years of spring. Oh, yep. wow, great. So, okay, so this is nothing new. Um, do you ever get nervous going into a home? Um, I, I've had a couple of experiences where you kind of get the, you know, the hair standing up on your arms. Um, I found that usually that was, um, kind of mistake, a uh, case of mistaken identity. Um, I was in a place where I know that one was a former slave quarters, and I just, you know, my uh, partner and I both felt it, and I had to go back in later, and I went in and explained who I was, and that I wasn't there for any kind of misintention or any malintent, and everything was absolutely fine. So I think that whoever was in there, you know, saw us walk in and didn't know what we were there for and kind of they got alarmed and we could feel it you know and we went back in and everything was fine okay. so that's the only time I get nervous is I think when they're scared we're you know you can kind of feel it you know right and well, I mean why do you all want to do this I mean it's pretty cool I've got to <laughs> say from the outside looking in but what drew the interest to begin with I've always just thought it was fascinating the possibility that there were, you know, ghosts, if you will. Um, just the fact they could exist always has fascinated me since I was a little girl. And then, you know, when when the shows became popular, you know, Ghost Hunters and some of those other shows, I said, oh, wow, you can do that. You can talk to them. You can go and you know try to communicate with them. I thought that fascinated me. And then I went on um, a couple public investigations with another local group in Delaware. And then uh, that's how, when I met Rick oh, on one of those investigations. He was part of that group and was told me he was forming his own. And I said, can I sign up? And that was four years ago. And here you are today. Here I am. Awesome. Well, I've got to ask now, what is set up in each place? Like, what, what, what all is here that can pick up different things? Um, so uh, the rooms where um, Sarah has told us about the most uh, activity, we have infrared cameras that can see in the dark. We have a DVR TV that's set up in the kitchen where um, one of our members can actually watch and see what's going on, see what the cameras are capturing so that something happens right away. We all carry walkie talkies and you know she can ask us, hey, is anyone in the dining room? Because I just saw a shadow walk by, I'm seeing if it's one of you and we can you know give her feedback as to where we all are. Um, also, we will have stationary voice recorders in each room so that if, you know, sounds or voices occur when we're not in the room, you know, those will be picked up and we can review those later or even when we are in the room. We all carry them around with us also. Nice. And those are, that's the EDP? That yes. Okay. And then we also each have our own um, different pieces of equipment we carry around with us from room to room. We carry uh, K2 meters which detect electromagnetic field fluctuations and other meters that do sort of the same thing. We carry a compass, like the regular compass, and they actually will spin if there's electromagnetic fields around them. Um, we all carry our own voice recorders. Uh, oh, we have a spirit boxes, which are, they run through radio frequencies real fast and theoretically are used to help the spirits communicate with us. So we try to use a variety of different tools to try to get them to cooperate each other. And I guess lastly, I would love to get, we want to get shots of all those tools and things that you are using. Sure. Um, what to you is probably the most, what's your favorite part about all of this? Um, kind of when you're sitting in the dark and, and you're asking questions and things that you ask get immediate responses via the equipment. Um, I mean, it would be great if they all came out and said, hey, I'm, you know, you know, Sarah, and I'm here to talk to you, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> so, um, but when we ask questions, we get immediate direct responses through any of the equipment. Um, you know, that's exciting, and it's a rush, and, and I think that's why we do it. We want to learn about these people, and they obviously still have stories to tell. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. C-O-H-E-R-D. I am CEO uh, of Delmarva Store Haunts, Inc. I'm Wendy Robinson, exactly how you think you would spell it, and I am co-lead investigator for Dunwater Historic Ponds. Awesome. Um, so we'll go one at a time, that way it makes it easier for David to um, move the camera. 
So what drew the interest of Poplar Hill Mansion? It's been here for many, many years. Well, uh, that's one of the reasons. So, uh, the, uh, we're, we're drawn to historical sites. We're also drawn to uh, help historical sites. We've not done that throughout our years yeah. doing these things. So uh, we have raised uh, into our fall activities through the, pu the public seasons that we've had. We've raised over- About 40,000? Uh, yeah, more than that even, uh, throughout, throughout the years. So um, yeah, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, what draw, drawn us here, of course, was the, uh, the story about the slave girl getting dressed caught on fire. That drew me to the, uh, the house itself. And then I read about how old the house was, how big it was, and it made me want to go in. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, this is the first house you all have done in Maryland, is that correct? Um, we did, no. We, we did London Dairy. We did London Dairy uh, Manor House last year uh, in, in, Mar in, Mar in the, where was it, e uh, Easton. E Easton, yeah. Easton, okay. So you all have not too many though. This is one of the few. No, uh, we that we are have. Del Delmarva historic homes. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have too many moths around. We had sure. we've had a few of them, but uh, Maryland we haven't been as much as some. Okay. Sure. Um, now, how does it work? I see there are wires through here. There are computers and and lights and cameras. Action. <laughs> right, right. What we do is uh, we are uh, a paranormal group. Uh, that is uh, science-based, but we also know that there's some things that is out there in between. So we're willing to say that we're paranormal too. So we're a little bit of both. In order to get there, we have to have all the science, all the uh, latest toys or gadgets or anything else that we can get to get uh, evidence. Our goal is ev evidence itself. Um, that's our main goal. Great. Because otherwise it's just stories. Right, right. right. With right. the evidence, it becomes more um, believable, if you will. Right. right, right. And we're not, when we go in, we don't go in to prove, and we don't go in to disprove. We just go in. And you let whatever happens happen. That's why we have no psychics in our group. Nobody has any special gifts because when they go in, they go in the proof. Also, we don't have all science people. I've turned down a lot of them that are all science. They don't believe in all this stuff, but they're all science. I turned them down too. You've got to have a little bit of both. I know for a fact, doing this for this long, and you know too, that there is something out there in between. Not all the time, but sometimes. And they do want to speak to us. And they have. Mm -hmm. They've actually communicated. Not only that, but it's really cool when they communicate and it's something about the past that we didn't know about the place that actually did happen or was there. That's what's very cool. For instance, we, we did Dover Air Force Base. Uh, we were doing drop zones, and one person named the wrong drop zone for the people that bailed out of this plane during World War II. And then we got an EVP, which is an electronic voice phenomenon. We played it back and called one of our people a Dagwood. Now, during World War II, that meant something. But I say that's up to you now, it probably doesn't mean much. Not the Sam sandwich, although the sandwich did come did come from that. Blondie and Dag were, were were big during World War II. They actually had movies, and if you were called a Dagwood, that was not a good thing. No. So for that EVP to come across in a World War II plane, saying calling this person a Dagwood is awesome. They communicated with us that night in that plane. What causes this? And if you say, well, this is a whole bunch of stuff, fine. If you could tell me who said that, because it's on my report, they can't. There's something out there. Oh, great. Wow. Well, I'm very interested to see.
see what will happen. And we'll scoot over to you, Wendy. I'm going to actually move my chair on this side. 